Hi all, let's have another amazing game in a chestnut shell. Paul Morphy playing his uncle, Ernest Morphy. So this was in 1850 in New Orleans. So Morphy was around 13 years old. Uh, E4, we see from Paul Morphy, his uncle plays E5. We go into basically this line with B4 is the Evans gambit. And now it's accepted. Its aim is often to construct a rapid center. Here we have d4 after e takes white castles. With the black king still in the center, this is a very, very effective move. Try and cut the king across uh, to stop the king castling. Black took on c3 here. That's taken. Now this move, bishop a3, cutting the king d6 trying to shield that diagonal but now queen b3 hitting that soft spot and tying down the bishop for a moment uh, to b7 so a lot of pressure on black's position here we have knight h6 yeah with this bishop over here there is a downside that's kind of tapped into because otherwise there would have been bishop takes h6 but white just gets that pawn now and hits g7 black defends that but now a very important liner opening move e5 so that's breaking open now after d takes this diagonal so black cannot castle again on the king side for the moment rook f e1 however now with the queen here instead of eyeing b7 black hopes to castle queen side with bishop d7 the welcome committee is set up with rook a b1 black castles queen side now here a very very interesting move is played which is not necessarily winning by force against all defenses by the way can you see what Paul Morphy does it's a very very dangerous move for sure if I give you five seconds okay Bishop a6 it requires very accurate defense and black did not offer very accurate defense here. Uh, knight a5 was played. That does defend b7 and also hits, by the way, a6 is hit by the queen and the bishop. Let's have a quick look actually at the simple reply. Queen takes a5, there's queen takes a6, and actually. It's a good idea to aim for this position. Black would, in fact, be better here, apparently. Uh, yeah, black's a little bit better. Okay, so... Yeah, that's that's the point. It's quite a clever point, really. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought B takes... Let's have a quick look. This is just losing to that. So the point is queen takes a6. It's it's quite a nifty point to it. But uh, Paul Morphy plays actually uh, this move, ignoring the knight for a moment, just threatening mate. We have bishop c6, which cuts, interrupts that a6. So now it's a whole different ballpark after queen takes a5. It's doubled horrible pawns for black and a king hunt after taking to get the material back. Queen takes, king d7. But maybe black was hoping to escape uh, without too much of a downside. But here there's a thumping move played. Can you guess if I give you five seconds starting from now? Okay, the forcing move, rook takes c6, crushing. It's all over basically, bother shouting. If queen takes, there will be knight takes e5, check, forking king and queen. So black tries queen f5, hitting the rook. But Morphy doesn't let go here, and he's relentless from this position. Guess what he plays here? If I give you five seconds. Okay, rook takes c7, check. The king cannot take this because I believe this is actually checkmate here. So king e8, 
but now it's pretty forcing queen c6 check queen d7 white could simply just take the queen but uh, a, f a more fun move was played rook b8 fretter than queen takes d7 check without rook takes it pinning the rook more fun move uh, which now encourages queen takes c6 but now check and rook takes d8 check and rook d takes e8 checkmate a pretty final position with the rooks there so another fun game of Paul Morphy against one of his relatives <laughs> um, yeah Ernest Morphy by the way claims that no one formally taught Morphy how to play chess he, he he learned the rules by observing the games between himself and Alonso you know Morphy's dad so a cute game showing you know Carlson Queenside is not escaping the wrath of Paul Morphy here comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much